Hello, if you've been a ZFS user like me, you might have noticed that there's some fundamental features of the file system that appear to be missing. For example, if you've ever used XFS or ButterFS, you might have noticed that you can use reflinks. Now, my video on hard links versus soft links versus reflinks hasn't come out yet, but essentially the part you need to know is reflinks allow you to use copy on write functionality. This is super useful if you want to make copies of files or directories without necessarily using more disk space because it can just point to whatever the old block was until you change it, at which point it's copy on write. So then the copy will be performed and your write request will be done. Reflinks are also super useful for offline deduplication. So ZFS has supported online deduplication for a long time but it's very memory intensive and you probably shouldn't use it unless you have two to three X to gain from using deduplication with ZFS. It's basically going to end up bottlenecking all of your re, uh, write and delete operations because every time you do one, it has to check against a massive table of duplicates that it's aware of. Now, the advantage of online deduplication is you don't have to ever run like a script periodically. The minute you write a file, you know that if it were a duplicate, it wasn't written. But Reflinks mean that you can effectively use tools like dupremove or rmlint to go through your file system, figure out which files are the exact same, and then reflink them. This is much better than hard linking because if you end up changing one of the files, you don't inadvertently change every copy of it. It will just make the copy then and change whatever you um, wanted to edit. It's also super useful in a workflow like these videos where I might have multiple copies of this project. And if I can just use reflinks, I can save a lot of disk space until say I end up actually changing some parts of one of these clips, at which point the file will get copied. So Reflinks are a super, super useful tool. And for the longest time, since at least since I started using OpenZFS pre 1.0, it has never been supported. And in fact, most people think ButterFS fully supports it, but there's a catch where if you're doing single disk um, with ButterFS, it does support it. But if you ever looked into ButterFS RAID 5 or RAID 6, Copy and write isn't guaranteed. You ne can't necessarily always use reflinks in that case. We can in ZFS now. Finally, as of a couple days ago of filming this, with ZFS 2.2.0, we have a block table, which means that reflinks are finally possible. Now, there's a couple things you need to know, and there's a couple of caveats. First of all, um, reflinks are typically used if you're doing like CP dash dash reflink equal auto or dash dash reflink equal always. And both of these result in some very interesting behavior with ZFS. And these caveats really come into play when we start talking about data sets in ZFS and similarly subvolumes in ButterFS. In ButterFS, regardless of however many subvolumes on a disk you have, they all share the same superblock. This means that if I had different subvolumes, I can reflink across subvolumes. With ZFS, there's, a, there's some quirks. If you're working within the same data set, you don't have to worry about anything the minute you install 2.2.0. Um, ref linking will just work for you. However, if you are linking across data sets, there are some interesting notes. If you do CP ref link equals always, that results in an IOCTL operation called FI clone. Now in the Linux kernel, this operation requires that your source and your target have the same super block. What this means is that it's going to fail. When you try to do CP ref link equal always across data sets, that operation won't work. But if you do CP ref link equal auto, you get a system call for copy file range. In this case, Linux doesn't necessarily care if or how a clone worked as long as the file made its way. Now, the interesting note with this is it means that you can actually ref link across data sets. According to Rob, who authored some of the pull requests, um, I'm going to link the, issue, the, the discussions and the issue as well as the pull request. Um, if you want to dig into this and find out exactly how some of these limitations work, um, or you want to actually ask the author who implemented this functionality, um, I'll have them linked down below. But what you need to know is, yeah, um, so reflink equal auto and always actually ends up called having different code paths, which means that you can sometimes reflink across data sets when you're using auto, but not if you're using always. If you're within the same data set, you have nothing to worry about. It should just work. Now, the reason this took so long to implement is because it, it implements an entire new table for actually caching these results. And some of the quirks are, for example, if you are trying to, the way directories are stored in ZFS is pretty unique um, in comparison to some other file systems, which means that I haven't fully looked at the code implementation yet because um, I haven't really had the time to. But given how many bytes they were, I, it is interesting to know how they ended up working this functionality into that. Um, all right, speaking of data sets, if you have encrypted data sets, 
you cannot reflect across different encrypted data sets. There's many reasons to this, namely the key stuff is kind of ends up being tied to the files within the data set. And also, if you think about it, it would be very weird. Like what if you reflect the file to a data set with a different password? How was that block stored? And what if you change the key for one of the data sets? So encrypted data sets aren't supported in this case. You should still be able to reflect within them, just not across them. This is this is of course a welcome change. It's quite literally been one of the um, one of the few things that has been really missing in ZFS for me. The other one being the ability to extend a VDEV. There is also some good news about that. There are some beta features that you can enable if you're okay with losing data. That's an entire topic for an entirely different video because that's super cool because the main limitation of ZFS has always been you can add another VDEV to the pool, but you can't extend the VDEV. Um, so there may be changes coming for that as well. Stay tuned, maybe I'll dig deeper into it. But anyway, the big news for today is cp-reflink is now supported. It's actually very interesting because reflinks got supported in ZFS a couple months ago, but we couldn't use them on Linux. It worked on BSD. Uh, and that's because the initial set of changes that were made to implement this uh, were done with upstream open ZFS, but they didn't necessarily have the adapters around the Linux system calls that were used. Um, and so finally, the PR that got merged last week implements the Linux portion of this. So while you could have technically used this on BSD or is Open Solaris still maintained? Oops. Um, now, now we will finally be able to use it on Linux, which I think is the most common place where ZFS, most common platform where ZFS is used, especially with some of the true, um, with some of the true NAS variants being based on Linux. All right, anyway, that's the update for today. If you were using ZFS, when 2.2.0 comes out to your distribution, it's still a release candidate. If you want to mess with it though, you can of course build it from Git, mod probe it in um, and give it a go. Uh, if it doesn't work, the, the, well, the, the issue is linked in the description down below. Uh, feel free to comment and talk to the maintainers there. But uh, that's all for now. Reflinks are finally supported in ZFS. Thanks for watching. If you are still using ext4 or XFS, check out ZFS on Linux. It's a cool project. If you're still using ButterFS, also give it a take a look maybe, especially if you have multiple art drives and you want to implement a more robust grade solution. Anyway, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.